Good afternoon, world. This is Adney, um, the co-host of the Call by God podcast. I am here with Devon, the son of my womb. Uh, we're about to have another discussion. Son, say hi to the audience. Hello, everyone. All right. We will be speaking on Matthew 6, 14, but I want to read from verse 9 so we can have a great context of this discussion. And I'm reading from the NLT version, and it reads like this. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we for, as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive you. And I read it to 15. What did you get from that scripture, son? Verse 14. Mm, Verse 14. Verse 14 is kind of like just a very blunt way of saying you need to learn to forgive. It's a very blunt way of saying that as a Christian, you need to learn how to forgive. And it even goes so far to tell us that when you begin to learn to forgive, God then will forgive you. And like I said, it's just a very, very blunt way of saying that you have to learn how to forgive. Now, I can tell you why. And the reason why is if you don't learn how to forgive, there's going to be so much that's going to hold you back that you haven't forgiven people for. I mean, as a Christian, you want to do anything and everything possible to complete God's will and try to fulfill the purpose that he has called you for on this earth. But if you have things in your past that are holding you back because you because you simply haven't done the thing as such as forgive, how are you going to be able to move forward? How are you going to be able to go where God needs you to go if you're just staying stuck in the past and haven't forgiven one person for something that probably did like 15, 20 years ago? I I really appreciate that you brought this up because um, there were some things inside of me that I was holding on to. There were some people that I held a grudge against and I had to get to a place of understanding forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't say that I'm weak. Forgiveness doesn't say that um, I'm going to go back and allow these people to hurt me again. What forgiveness says to me is I'm free. Forgiveness frees you. Um, A lot of times we have people who hold these grudges and this hate and this animosity in their heart for a person who's already moved on with their lives, who's living their best life, like for real, they're living their best life. They don't even think about you, but here it is. You're harboring so much animosity and hate and you're sick. You're, you're, you're dying, whatever the case may be. And, and one thing I remember my minister from my, from Hollywood, Florida at the Hope Church of Christ said, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Hate is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. That person ain't even thinking about you. They moved on with their lives. They did. And sometimes they come back into your life and just start up a whole new set of trouble because, and it gets to you because you haven't forgiven them. And I had to learn that. Um, There's a dear sister in my life I love so deeply that I honestly had to say she's not good for me. And I had to say she wasn't good for me because she was holding on to so much hate. It was so bad that I felt it. Like when I would talk to her, I just felt it. And I was like, you know what? I can't have this person in my life because I'm not in that space any longer. Now, don't get it twisted. Adney knew how to hold a grudge like anybody else. Adney knew how to see you in public and act like you wasn't there. But when I became a Christian, I had to realize Jesus washed the feet of the man that was about to betray him. So who am I to hold a grudge against somebody who did something to me years ago? Who am I to, you know, 
hate and not forgive a person or even the hurt that I endured in my past as a child, who am I to hold those people hostage when they didn't even know anything better to do? So when I read the scripture, I understood I have to have a heart of forgiveness because number one, Jesus forgave me. He still forgives me today for my foolishness. Sometimes I I do some things and I'm like, oh my goodness, but he still forgives me. So if my savior, my father in heaven can forgive me for the stuff that I do, who am I not to forgive others? You have anything else, son? Oh, yes. I'm just going to speak on the expectation part of this verse. It's also letting us know how we can be expected to be forgiven by God when we don't know how to forgive someone else. So really, we expect to be forgiven for something that we have done, but we haven't learned how to forgive someone else for something that they have done to us. So at that situation, you're now being hypocritical because you want to be forgiven for something that you've done, but you can't forgive some person they, for what they've done. And it could be like the smallest thing, like somebody cuts you off at the line in the in the Wendy's. We're trying to get your uh, biggie bag or your four for four. Like, like they cut you off. I you know, you know what I mean. You know, you hungry. It's late at night. You just want to get your food and go, but they cut you off. You know, they get in line in front of you, and you don't forgive them for that. But yeah, you do it to somebody else, and you expect to be you expected to be forgiven for that. So it's like we expected we're expecting to be forgiven, but we can't forgive someone else. So really, like I said, it's. It's teaching us that we have to learn how to forgive. And now I'm also going to tell you how not forgiving can, can do something to you. I'm going to use me as an example. For me, for those of y'all who don't know me personally, when I was younger, my mom can testify to this. When I was younger, I was a very, very angry, angry child. I was I can tell you this much. I had enough anger that I could probably burn down the world when I was younger. I mean, it's it's gotten better now, but like I said, I'm I'm still working on that personally. So yeah, still working on that personally. I do have some problems control my anger every now and then. But I'm working on it. The emotional toll that it can take on you as a person and as a Christian is not worth when you could just let it go. Like I said, I haven't forgiven for a very long time and it made me such an angry person. Now that I've learned to actually let it go and finally release it, it's helping me to release some of the anger that I still have. And not only that, it's when not forgiving, it helped me. It didn't help me, but it built a habit within me to not forgive off the bat and hold it in, just keep it in. Which is, I'm gonna tell you, which is my problem. Instead of speaking on it and you know getting past it and burning to you know get through it, I hold it in. Which then leads to anger. But like I said, you holding on to something, and how my mom said, you holding on to something. It's not going to do you any good. All all it's going to do is just give the person that you haven't forgiven, give them power over you. And to be honest, as Christians, no one should have power over us but God. So now, the choice is on you. Are you going to learn how to forgive? Or are you going to let someone keep having power over you? Amen. That was powerful, son. That was really, really powerful. Um, I remember having dizzy spells and I never understood why. And there were times that it the it was they were debilitating, like I couldn't even move. And as I started to release people, as I started to allow God to remove people from my life, remove hate and anger from my heart, those dizzy spells became less and less. Now I still have them from time to time, 
but they were just not as bad or de- or de- as um, debilitating. And it, and it clicked. Finally, God revealed to me the longer I held on to hate, the longer I held on to unforgiveness, the more I was getting sick. What am I saying? There is a person out there who's really ill. Doctors cannot find what is wrong with you. I say this in all sincerity, with all peace of mind. Let that person that you have a grudge and unforgiveness for go. Your health is depending upon it. Let them go. Release them. Free yourself. The Bible tells us if the sun makes you free, you are free indeed. So who are you to allow someone to hold you hostage? Who are you to allow someone to keep you shackled because you refuse to forgive something they've done? If you are that young girl that was molested as a child, my heart goes out to you. And the reason I say that, because I understand, forgive that person because They didn't know any better. If you are that wife that was cheated on by your husband or abused by him and cheated on, let him go. He didn't know better. Let God handle that situation. The Lord said, vengeance is mine, I shall repay. If you are that employee who was fired and you don't even know why, let it go. God has something way better for you. What am I saying? Forgive, free yourself. And allow God to have full and full reign and control of your heart and your mind. Son, is there anything else that you want to share before we um, end this podcast? No, ma'am. I'm all good. Well, world, there you have it. Devon and I had another amazing discussion on unforgiveness. Just remember, let them go. Free yourself and allow God to continue to just move through you. Have a wonderful and magical day. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You've heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God. And give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.